KSM show. All right, all right, all right, all right. My, my main guest, my main guest, as I told you, this guy, I simply call him a man to respect, man. This guy is doing something fascinating in Ghana. His, his management sense, his business sense, his, his skills, his acumen, and everything makes the difference, man. And you know who I'm talking about, man. No other than my own brother. Put your hands together, show some love for someone at that moment. Thank you very much. Come on. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much. My it's good brother. to have you here. Good to be you here. Know, that the first time I had you here, well, I was then recording at Metro TV. That's correct. Yeah, you had come to talk about Mogo. That's And correct. you brought Teddy Osei that is to true. my show, man. Just a lot. Take a quick second. Look that at was 2006. 2006, yes. right? Take a second. 2006. Look at someone's right there. Let's talk about Mogo. Mogo. Music of Ghanaian origin. Yes. The concept, the history behind the concept, what is it all about? Well, Mogo is a celebration of Ghanaian music, um, to put it straight. Now, we just talked about Mogo um, as an idea to try and reverse the decline of authentic Ghanaian mm. music mm. and also advance um, new talents and new formats. When you say authentic Ghanaian music, what format are you There's talking the about? There's a kind of music that when you hear, it represents the soul of Ghanaian music. The kind of music that when you are outside of the borders of Ghana and you get um, just a string or two of that kind of music, you know that uh, this is Ghanaian music. <laughs> Yeah, how have you been, man? And Very Mogo? Well. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's it still lives on. <laughs> still lives on. Yes, yes, yes. One, one of the, we're going to talk about so many things, man. Yes, I have yes, some men here in the house, <laughs> man. We, <laughs> but one of the things that you and your team at City seem to be doing is creating something new, man. You're redefining the face of broadcasting in a way. <laughs> 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 so, somehow Ghana seems to be at the center that's of your agenda. Is that exactly it? what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just about expressing who we are and uh, reliving the identity of the Ghanaian. I mean, we, we can pick a few things from the Western world, for an example. Mm. But at the end of the day, the ultimate um, objective is to help shape us as a people and also to have a resounding uh, call of our identity, it's Ghanaian, and it's the Ghanaianness in us that we like to express mm. using radio. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Everything we do, Ghana is at the, the center. center. Yes. Wow. And at times it comes at a real cost, hmm. and I'm sure you like, know that more than. I mean, it normally doesn't um, give way to sponsorships easily. Um, you know, once upon a time, a company in Ghana. Uh, brought a certain American artist here and and the artist was paid one million dollars for performing for an hour or two here right here in Ghana um, and and I, I don't begrudge that company yeah. but the, the, the point is that really how does that help the country Ghana you may be um, the, the, the best industrial performer but you know, if the Ghana platform is not elevated to a certain level, mm. you are dwarfed by other performing countries. And so it's important that at all times we look at how to elevate the Ghanaianness in mm -hmm. us to bring out the identity so mm -hmm. we can compete mm -hmm. at the global level as a people. Mm. So that's why we do Ghana stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's great. I mean, um, where did it come from? Did you all sit down and decide to go this way? Or this is Samantha's dream that, uh, you know, because, for example, Heritage Month, March, the caravan thing that you have introduced in the system. And gradually, as soon as you may look, you know, people are now starting to appreciate checking out Ghana. That's correct. That's Your correct. last caravan, well, you had like three, three cars, three, three buses? Three buses, uh, STC buses that carry at least 52 persons each. each. So. Yes. To go and tour Ghana. That's correct. That's correct. I mean, we, <laughs> the whole thing about touring Ghana um, for us came out of the idea of the Heritage Month. 
and the Heritage Month is about celebrating Ghana. It's not about the City FM thing. It's about pushing Ghana yeah. on other people's agenda. That look, there's only one country where you are not a stranger. There's only one country where you are not a visitor, and that's Ghana. Mm. Now, if you don't talk and celebrate Ghana, who mm. else will do that? We get upset. The, the other day, CNN did uh, a piece about Ghana, it's, and it's people were upset. Yeah. People yeah. were people are upset, upset. Now, if we don't talk about Ghana, somebody, somebody will talk about to... Ghana. And guess what? They have an audience to satisfy. Mm. They don't do stuff about Ghana to satisfy Ghanaians. Yeah. No way. To satisfy so their audience. They, yes, their yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have to bring Ghana to the level that is marketable mm. to derive value from yeah. Ghana. And that's mm. what we do. Mm. So we have, we've had foreigners on the trip. And they tell us, this is the Ghana we never knew. Mm. All we see is the sanitation problems, the road accident problems, the disease problems. Mm -hmm. Yes, every country has a level of uh, uh, sanitation problem, disease problem. Every country has the world over. But how they manage? But when you are selling your country, that's not the things that you talk about. Yeah. But again, if you don't talk about it, somebody Ooh, will. Exactly. And they will talk about things that exactly. favor them. And exactly. so that's why we do what we do. The Heritage Month, we think, is something for Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate Ghana. We shouldn't limit it to just 6th of March. 6th mm. of March yeah. is left to parades and speeches. That's not what we are talking about. We are saying that why don't we wear our Made in Ghana uh, um, um, shirts, for instance. And then you have people say, oh, but even the fabric is from Holland. Please. That's not what we are talking about. We are saying that whilst you get tailors and dressmakers to make the shirts for you, you are creating a business. Yeah. So what if we all decide that we are going to wear made in Ghana? Mm. Do you know the amount of business we have generated for local artisans yeah. and tailors? That's what we are saying. Yeah. So something that will generate value for our own people. Mm. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. And significantly, how that will even have an impact on our currency oh, that we are crying now oh, that, Jesus. you know. Is going As for the currency <laughs> business, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we, we have government in, government out. Yeah. We treat the currency as yeah. if we're pouring water in a basket. Mm. We just keep, oh, let's, let's push uh, X amount of dollars into the system and it will stabilize. It will not stabilize. Mm. It has never stabilized before. It will not stabilize. It will stop and move again. The thing is that block the holes. Mm. And block the holes start with the low-hanging fruits, consumption. Why, for instance, should we use hard-end dollar to buy toothpick? Mm. Why should we use hard-end dollar to buy stuff that we can produce? And at times people say that, oh, but you produce at a higher cost. No, it's not at a higher cost. The real cost is captured in the dollar that we are using to buy from another person's country. Mm. And indeed, the moment you buy from another person's country, guess what? You are creating employment for, for, them, for them at your own expense. Yeah. So there are things that we can do. I mean, I'm not an economist. I've never done economics at any level. But I'm just saying that at the basic level, let's top the practices that push us to depend on the dollar mm -hmm. when indeed we can create those mm -hmm. values in mm -hmm. Ghana. Mm -hmm. And that's all we say. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Heritage Month, eat our own food. We did a kinky party on Saturday. Brilliant. Kinky, pepper, whatever. We even added a claw. I don't know if you heard a <laughs> claw. Heard a claw. Well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> you know? Yes. And, and, it's a girl thing. A yes, a girl. Yeah. yes, 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 yes. It's a girl thing. We added a claw and it was beautiful. And I think that it should be a time in history where Ghanaians should eat their own food. Mm -hmm. Now, if we eat our own food, we'll be forced to grow our own food. If we grow and eat our own food, we'll be forced to buy with CD instead of dollar. Now, if we use dollar to buy food that we eat, what are you going to use to buy the medicine that you cannot manufacture? Mm. And that's a simple, a mm. simple equation that mm. I think we should understand as a people. So ours is to push Ghana and keep pushing until mm -hmm. people get infected with the Ghana thing. And you're doing it brilliantly, man. Thank you very much. I, I remember Heritage Month, you know, 
I, I, that was last year's, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, Bernard was talking to somebody about Achim, you know. Yes, that's right. And I was like so engrossed. Yes, he yes. So, wait a minute, no, I was like clueless. No. Like, hey. Yeah, it's it's because we, you see, as a country, one of our our ills, mm. if, if I should say, is that we have been narrow-minded with our history. Very. We don't open history up to conversation. Mm. We mm. see history as what is written in the textbooks, and that's where it ends. No, no, no. It goes beyond that. The textbooks are just for exams writing. Now, beyond that, there's a story that has to be told, and people are not telling stories. So one of our objects is to be able to tell the Ghana story and put it in the right context. Put it in the right context. The story of our people, the yeah. story of the geography, the places, you know, what happened. And, you know, all our historical narratives end up in politics. You understand? Yeah. And it doesn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Politics yeah. came after history. Yeah. And the history is what makes us a people. It's mm. not the politics. Mm. As for the politics, it's a confused set of elements that we... That's why politics has never solved anybody's problem. Mm. But if you can create your identity, package your identity, market your identity, mm. then it will attract people to also pay a visit yeah, yeah. to what you have. Yeah. And then you have tourism. So we really want to push this Ghana thing. Mm -hmm. You know, our music, our people, our food, our places... So we just want to do a 360 degrees hmm. thing about tourism. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and what, what, interesting, because when we talked about uh, how in Ghana the whole agenda is centered around politics, yeah. but history comes before the politics That's began, correct. which is so great. And I also noticed that on even your radio, your morning show seems to make a, a, a concerted effort to depoliticize issues and, yeah. and and talk about them, you know. Well, you see, so what, what we are saying is that, first of all, how do we progress as a country? And for me, as a leader, I have said that politics will never develop anybody's country. Say that again. Politics will not develop anybody's country. Mm. Nobody. What develops a country is understanding and vision. There must be a vision followed by understanding. If there's no vision, the people perish. The Bible has even said it. Now, if there's no understanding, nothing will be built. So people are there, they don't understand where you are going. They will not believe in a thing. You can do the best things. If they don't know where it will lead them to, mm, mm. they will not latch onto it. It will not impact on them. You may even be transferring value to them, but they will have no, they, they can't appreciate. So we believe that as a people, we should have a vision and we as the people should have an understanding of where we are going. Now, politics is not serving that purpose because we've seen politicians in, politicians out. Mm -hmm. The reason politics is not serving that purpose is that politicians are motivated by different things. Mm -hmm. From mm -hmm. money to ego to greed to all sorts of things that you every now and then you have politicians who mean well mm -hmm. okay but we don't have too many examples for the younger people who want to go into politics to emulate that is where the problem is that selflessness in politics is what we are missing mm. that can somebody want to go into politics and not care about you know, amassing wealth for themselves mm, mm, in Africa, mm, in Ghana, mm. is a big question. Everybody believes that. And look at people, young people who have been in politics right here in Ghana. Let's say, let me just cap it at year 2000. From year 2000 up until now, 2019, there are young people that I personally know had nothing, went into politics, and mansions started springing up. Now, if I'm a young person yeah. and I see my schoolmate who didn't have a job, yeah and was following politics and suddenly come into uh, uh, governance and then uh, V8 here, V8 there, Mercedes here, Mercedes there, uh, building here, building there. Please, what am I supposed yeah, to do? That becomes your motivation. That, that, that inspires motivation. That, that inspires me. me. And for me, yeah. that's the bigger problem. 
you know, we should expand the conversation so that people will have options. Yes, politics is, is, is good, but that by itself is not what solves the problem. It's when we have understanding of where the conversation is taking us to, then our problems, first of all, will be identified, and then we can solve them. This is the agenda that is driving people more and more towards your, your, your station, well, you know. Because people seem to be identified, oh, yeah, there's, there, there's something else other than politics. Yeah, because, there are I mean, issues. Granted, in a, in, in, in a least developed country like Ghana and, and, and most LDCs, what we call development issues tend to be political issues. Mm -hmm. the, the, what they call bread and butter issues. Mm -hmm. So what to eat, where to sleep. Um, health issues, you know, um, they, they tend to be political issues. But what we are saying is that the, the confrontational approach to politics makes these essential elements um, um, mm. of, of, of non-effect, yeah. you yeah. know. They're crowded out. Yes, they, they are crowded out, you know. So where, let's bring the conversation to for instance, in the last one week, there's been conversation about militias, about something called double, um, you know. Well, maybe it's good to know, but I do not think that that should preoccupy everybody for a whole one week. When people outside of our main urban areas don't have the potable water that we have promised them. Transportation is bad. People have farm produce that gets, you know, rotten because they can't move from one place to another. They lose value. They lose their, 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 their survival because if you, you look at Ghana, because of our land ownership systems, we are not able to go into the huge industrial farming because mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. much land can you own? Yeah for you to come to that commercial level of farming. They have maximum 10 acres, you know, but yeah. you are competing with uh, farmers in Indonesia yeah. and Malaysia yeah. who own, say, 100 acres, acres, thousands of acres, you know, so economies of scale. So you do all these things. We are not thinking of how to compete. We, every day is politics. And we think that, no, this politics thing will destroy us. And that's why we don't make it part of our programming to let politicians drive our conversation mm, because mm. they themselves they don't know where they are going with their <laughs> conversation oh, they, yes. they themselves don't know their politicians <laughs> don't know where you they think, are going you, you think they are clueless well I, I i will be reluctant to say they are clueless yeah they may have an idea okay. of what they want but by their action they don't seem to know where they are going with their conversation mm, mm. because that's the reason we've had certain things on the agenda for years and yet no solutions. Mm. The issue of public or mass transportation, the issue of the BRT systems, the issue of agriculture, getting into our, our local settings and seeing the best ways to deliver health. You know, so all these things are part of the conversation and ours is to keep the country focused on development, not just politics. The politicians can do what they, are, uh, they want to do, but our aim is that let's not amplify the non-essential things that politicians will do. They should have their day, but we will have our way. Put your hands <laughs> together. It's amazing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me take, let's go back a little bit, man. You remember the first time we met? Oh, yeah. Um, that was um, that was um, in the nineties. Nineties, nineties, on the eighth floor of the trust towers. Yes, I think that was yes, the first yes, time. Yes, I met. yes, 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 yes. That's correct. <laughs> when uh, you were doing the, the vibe program, yes, and it was yes, hot yes, and, and, and so much energy, yeah. you know. And and then I was at Joy FM. Yeah, uh, I remember. You yeah. know, I used to come to you and see what you were doing, and it was exciting. We had a great exciting. time. We had a great time. Exciting. But I'm, I'm glad because it was during those days, or so somewhat, you know. Then eventually, we had heard that you had moved from Joy. 
Yeah, and okay, so, so, so I, I was at Joy from, from 95 up until 2001. 2001, yeah, okay. Just after okay. the election, okay. that's when I, I, okay. I, I left. Okay. Yeah, when okay. uh, President Kufour um, took over. Um, then I went to the University of Leicester to do my master's mm -hmm. program. So quick, quick, quick did. Uh, after two years, I, I, I actually resigned, I think May of that year or so, uh, when I was halfway through my master's. I just thought that, look, let me get a, another experience. Mm. But I didn't resign from before leaving, to, to be honest. Okay. I just took a leave of absence. Okay. And, but um, in between my course, I just decided, that, look, let me try something else. Yeah. And so finished the course and joined Coca-Cola uh, West Africa. So I did that for another two years, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, taking me through the regions, uh, <laughs> Liberia, <laughs> Sierra Leone, everywhere else. And that was also... Um, solid experience for me because I just first degree computer mm -hmm, science mm -hmm. and um, didn't know a thing about marketing but Kuzi Chum had um, that belief in me and and just thrust me into into radio now doing my master's and then getting into a real marketing operations function uh, uh, with coca-cola and that was an eye-opener and so when I had the opportunity to come back to Ghana uh, into radio you know my 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 direction was that i did if i had to do radio i'd want to start f from from scratch really yes why um because i thought that i had amassed for myself um some kind of some level of um know-how and resources um to the effect that i could i could start Mm. and overtake mm. i could start and overtake Inverty. and and that confidence came as a result of my own as a person my involvement in a setting up of of joy fm adum fm and and love fm um, of course it's not something that is written anywhere so but i know what i know and so based on that confidence i knew that if it's the ideas that i churned out working for mr chum and, and God bless him forever, working for Mr. Chum, if I would put half into something that I'm personally, you know, uh, uh, involved in, then uh, I'll, I'll be successful. So mm. that was my confidence. Mm. And so when I had the opportunity uh, with um, Uncle Nick, Mr. Mr. Matefew, I said, hey, let's go for it. So myself, Paul Adamotri, and a few others went into it, started from scratch in November of uh, 2004. So that's how the story of City also began. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. And mm -hmm. when we presented, well, you, as you're saying, you, because you had been so instrumental, yeah, you had the confidence that you can now start another one. And oh yes, oh yes. I, really? I, I the thing is, you know, radio wasn't one of my uh, career options. I, it never came up at any point. Um, I used to do a lot of events on campus, USK and UST, and so maybe what I knew was how to organize events and promotions. And so, but, you know, what we brought into radio at the time was, was analytical thinking. Mm. Um, because what I did best, and which Kwesi Chum still talks about, is sit back and analyze the, mm. the trends and then punch the system. So... I could listen to KSM, for instance, and see what KSM was doing on Vibe mid-morning, and then take elements of it and create a program on Saturday morning on, on, on Joy FM, um, look at what uh, Groove FM was doing, and then, mm -hmm. okay. So, mm -hmm. well, whether it's copying, I don't think it's copying, it's emulation. Mm -hmm. Emulate the good things that mm -hmm. people are doing, keep yourself on your platform, raise your platform, mm -hmm. and you'll be louder than they are. Mm. So, so that's something that I could do well. Maybe from computer science, I don't know. <laughs> but so, so I could do that. And when I came, at the time when we, when we started City, there were 24, 25 stations in Accra at the time. And Joy was Way light up. years away, yeah. you know. So everybody who met me was like, hey, but you, with this thing, can you, with the yeah. dominance of Joy FM, I say, it's not about Joy FM, it's about me. It's not about Joy FM, it's about me. Then what about you? It's about what I can do. They have done what they have to do, but let's see how it goes. And I'm not going after them. In fact, my staff gets confused at times. 
And the truth is that I don't listen to any other radio station. You don't listen to any no. station? Wow. I do not listen, and I'm not being arrogant about it. Yeah. I'm a very passionate person. Yeah. And I do things with purpose. And one of the things I said is that I will do what's in my head, what I plan to do, not what somebody else is telling me to do. And I do not listen to. There are times that I remember meeting a young man, and he, he came up to me and started talking, you know, oh, some is. We, we spoke for a while. So when he was leaving, I said, but where do you work? He said, oh, so you don't know me? I said, well, maybe I've met you. He said, oh, I'm the one on this radio station every morning. I said, oh, <laughs> oh sorry. I, I, you know, and he probably yeah, thought I, yeah. I was making fun. Of. Mm, no, mm. I do not listen. Hmm. Hmm. because I have a picture of what radio should be. Hmm. And I don't want... And you think maybe listening will distract you or it, 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 let I, you aim at something I, you shouldn't I, be I aiming? don't even know, but I, I just think, I just know that I don't have the motivation okay. to tune in, to, to listen, listen to. to. A few times I've had to listen is when, for instance, somebody has called me that, oh, there's this thing happening on this station, and, and then I listen in that. But as a practice, yeah, I don't do. listen to any other station. No, I haven't. I haven't. So we wanted, we had a picture of what we wanted to do with City. Let City be about Ghana. Let's drive the development issues. One of our things is that don't go after human beings. Mm. When somebody is in trouble, let them be. Let not that be the focus of your conversation. When a Ghanaian business is in trouble, let not that be the focus. There are stages in development of companies. A company may have a bad patch, but let's not do like scavengers. It's like, yes, he's in trouble, so let's he. Yeah. No, we don't do that. We don't play leaked tapes. If they talk about all these leaked tapes thing that yeah, we've never, never played, touched, yeah. we don't touch it because we didn't record it. Mm. Unless the person who recorded it is in the studio to play it, mm. then they, mm. they, you know, they take ownership. But you know, all these what are considered frivolous things, we don't do them because we want to set a good example for the younger people to follow. <laughs> and are you, are you so far, so far, you're happy because it, it seems to be working? Then, well, we are, we are, we are content with what we have. Yeah. We are content with what we have. I mean, there are others who have made more money doing this work. Yeah. Um, I, and, and with all humility, I'll say that making money is not our motivation. Making just enough to keep us going is what we, we are about. And that's why we employ younger people all the time. I want the station as the character of the station to be represented by younger people. Mm. And that's why for most city events, when people come, they don't see me. Yeah. They don't see me because it's not about me. It's about the people. It's about the younger people. And that's why you find the Bernard Avlers, the um, uh, Jessicas, and all these people leading the pack. And that's how it's supposed to be very soon. And I see Bernard now pushing other people. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you have the, yeah. the young boy, Caleb Kuda. Yeah. You have, um, you know, all these young people also coming up, Kujaku Toboating and the rest. So they're all coming up. And that's how I suppose, that's the succession mm, that we do mm. while we sit back and then give guidance. Mm. So that's how the city brand is expressing itself. Mm. <laughs> and I, I, I think one, for me, uh, uh, what, what I find immediately noteworthy about the brand is you, you groom. Right? Yes, <laughs> you yes. don't poach. You just... No, no, after poaching is not part of <laughs> you it. Yes, really. Because Bernard Avle was from university. It wasn't yeah, that. But yeah, you groomed yeah, Bernard. And yeah, he's now... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's we, now we, we, pop. We, you know, we try to groom. You see, but, but, but truth be told, um, you will see only the success stories. Yeah. Uh, I must say again that we, in some attempts to groom people, we have failed okay. at doing some. Okay. But really, we are not that perfect. But... Um, the philosophy is that don't reap from where you have not sown. Wow. So don't sit back, um, go and take money from another industry by fair or foul means and come and pump it into the media by buying, quote unquote, buying uh, people, already made people from mm. other um, mm. established companies 
to build your kingdom. Um, my Christian principles will not allow me because I know where that will take me. Mm. That with the same effort that you you get money to buy people, somebody who is richer than you one day will come and start <laughs> so, buying people. Yeah. And we may end up buying everybody from you. But if you inculcate in the people a sense of loyalty where they feel that ownership mm. of the process, that we own it together, we are loyal to the brand, in succeeding, we all succeed. In failing, we all fail. And for us, that's what we have built with the organization, that people come and work at City and move on. But you, I can say that the movement to other stations since we started, we have less than 5% mm. that people have moved from City to other stations. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have somebody move, but I do not recount any single occasion where one of our hard hitters or our key people will leave City and go to another station. Mm. I mean, you have national service people, they do, and we don't retain them. They may find themselves in yeah. another station, yeah. which is fine, yeah. Yeah. Um, occasionally. But generally, they will move from City and continue with education, or maybe after five, six years, they would want to go into another industry. But quite a number, a good number of them that started with me, at least I can count about 15 of them who are still in the company mm. for the last 14 years. Wow. Show some love. <laughs> so let's, that's your business acumen. Let's, let's talk about family, man. Yes, sir. Your wife, was it Winifred? Was it? Yes, she's Winifred. Yeah. She still is Winifred. She <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long have you been married? Ah. So, so, so we've been married since 94. 94? Yes. Oh, young, young couple. Oh, yeah, we're very young. We're yeah. very young. Yeah. I mean, very early we knew that we wanted to get married. So we, did, we didn't think that uh, I needed to buy a Where did you guys meet? Um, so we met in church. Okay. Yeah, we met in church. I attend Action Chapel and I still am there. And we, we used to live in the same area, kind of. So we used to walk together and, you know, and one thing led to another. <laughs> uh, let and me, the rest let, is let me be quick to add hallelujah. Oh, great, great. And yes. you have two wonderful yes, kids? Yes, I have two children, yes. Mm. Um, How old are they? Um, my son just turned 23. Oh. Um, and then my daughter just turned 21. Okay. So, yes. You have yeah. two, will we? I have two, yes. Mm. Yes, uh, I'm dancer. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what kind of dad are you? I mean, if I, if I, well, if I uh, ask your kids, what would they say? Well, um, if you ask my kids, I, 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 I don't know, but I'm <laughs> sure my daughter will say one thing and my, my, so my son that, will say another yeah. thing. Because my son thinks at times I'm, I'm too tough, um, you know, hard on, on the things he does. Um, my daughter also is a kind of person who keeps coming at you with questions. You know, she never stops, mm, you mm. know. But my, my son will just keep quiet and do what he wants to mm -hmm, do. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know, he's a man, so... It's like, hey, let me, leave, let me do what I want to do. I'm also a man, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, he's out of school and, and working yeah, in, in, in yeah. some bank somewhere. Mm. So it's... Um, <laughs> and how would uh, your wife describe you? My wife... My wife normally would... Dis well, she, she would say that this man needs more than one day to... to from God to do things like <laughs> I'm always up to something yeah. else, you know. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, it was difficult because I was all over the place, you know. I go to work, I never come home till 10 p.m. Radio, you know how radio, yeah. you know, the beginning of radio, and, and, and it was tough uh, at the beginning, but um, years after, we, mm. we kind of found an yeah. equilibrium yeah. and, and, and then great, uh, things. Great, but great. She, she teaches and she mm -hmm. does long hours at times so mm -hmm. um we, we have a good yeah, balance now yeah. I, or i believe mm -hmm. <laughs> final question um you've done great in radio amazing great is not even the word you know terrific um now the city tv 
What are plans for City TV and? Um... Well, City TV is also uh, coming on the heels of the City brand, and our thing is to push the the Ghana agenda once again. Um, people have asked us, for instance, we have one telenovela that we play. And people keep coming back at us. Oh, why don't you do local content? Why don't you do local content? And I say, yes, you, this, this is the kind of question you should be asking all the TV stations, you know. But guess what? We do 95% local content. 95% local content. Mm. And the 5% is shared between um, Al Jazeera News, DW News, VOA News, and the telenovela that you see. Now, why telenovela? We have cited um, scores of research data that shows the place of telenovela in African television. Of course, telenovela and drama. And you'll be shocked to see that we have about 65% of TV viewers who watch TV because of telenovelas mm -hmm. and drama. Mm -hmm. So ours is, and what we don't do is, we don't want to sacrifice our prime time with foreign content. We make sure that our prime time is occupied by locally produced content. And we are more into news and current affairs. Mm -hmm. So we do, we have nine bulletins of news a day. Nine, 20, 20. Every 20 minutes within the hour, there's another bulletin. And it keeps coming until 8 p.m. when we have a whole one hour bulletin. So we do, so ours is, Apart from the news, what else do we do? The tourism programs, the financial programs, the education programs. So we, we, ours is to get back to the Ghana agenda mm. and push Ghana mm. in a favorable way to attract more numbers. Because there are, there are too many people who have resigned to Ghana television. And the average Ghanaian middle class cannot watch any TV channel if it's not on DSTV. Yeah, that's true. Very true. So that should tell yeah. you that their aim is to be on DSTV. And so if you happen to be on DSTV, they will find you there. But we want to reverse the trend and make sure that Ghanaians like what they see on Ghanaian TV. So that's uh, City TV for you. Just a lot, man. <laughs> Very, very soon you'll be seeing some fantastic uh, Sapphire products on, on City TV, man. We, we love locally Beautiful. produced. Uh, yes. Locally produced. Yes. Uh, very, coming soon. <laughs> so much, uh, it's great to have you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that <laughs> finally. <laughs> but you've so, done. You, so we are having Mogo. We are having Mogo. Yes. 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 yes, yes. You're having Mogo. We have set that day aside to celebrate Ga music, music and then grow that as a brand Accra Music Festival. So we have the, the Ga groups, uh, Adani Best, um, Dromona group, we have Sina Soul, we have, uh, you know, all the Ga guys are coming at the AMA office there, the forecourt of the AMA office. Wow. And then the week after, <coughs> we go into Mogo concert, um, which also has a, a whole lineup of artists. Put your hands together, man. <laughs> and like I was saying from the beginning, you've come a long way. Yes. And yes. you've done terrific, man. Thank God. Um, thank thanks God. for your leadership. Thanks for your team. <laughs> oh, I think uh, you, you, you are... Yes, we, we pray. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do pray. Yeah. I must say. And yeah. I think that this should be part of the interview. It will, be, it will be unfair if I don't add that. Because, you see, I say that because we've had very difficult times. We have had difficult times where... Um, I don't see my way forward. So what I do is that I call Bernard, I call Maoli Chikata, I called the early morning pastors, and I say this morning, every dawn, when you finish your devotion, meet me on, at the rooftop, and we we'll do a one-hour prayer and deal with some of these issues. It's just the basis of my belief. And, so, and that has worked and keeps working. Because really, I don't have all the solutions. Mm. And I won't pretend that mm. I had everything figured out and straight away mm. things that mm. we have, we've had some very difficult mm. times. Mm. Very difficult mm. times, mm. you know. Mm. And we have only come out because we have resigned from the physical action to prayer that God 
at this point, we want you to intervene. And it's worked for us. I don't know about others, but it keeps working for us. So yes, physical effort, but God has been good. God has been good. Great time. Put your hands together, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. KSM Show.